Yeah. All right, Yost. Tell what? us what today is and what we're doing. I don't know what day it is. I'm trying to think. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, and it's the third day. It's the coldest day. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna make it to Helena. About the size of it. Day three was one of the most exciting days for me anyway. We were going over Stimple Pass. We were hoping to make it to Helena. We had a pretty good idea on how many miles we could cover because the last two days have been pretty good. We grain the horses twice a day usually. We had nose bags and we feed them pretty much straight to oats, a little bit of peas. <laughs> Just something that would give them a lot of energy and it seemed to hold the weight on them pretty good as well. What branch did they say? L. L. <laughs> the L ranch. Someone you guys know, or they know. Yeah. The person you know. we know, you know who you are. You know who you are. Yep. We're, We're staying there, yep. so be prepared. Stemple Pass, here we come! So Stemple Pass was one of my favorite parts we did. We figured we'd probably need a four up team to go over it because it was pretty steep and windy and for quite a ways. So we hooked up the four up team for that and they were pretty fresh when we took off. We ended up loping most of the way up the pass. Last quarter of a mile or something, we slowed down to a walk and cooled them off a little. The horses had pulled us up a thousand feet in elevation over the last two and a half miles. While Concord coaches were highly prized by stage lines, their most valuable possessions were likely their horses. Stage horses were valued at roughly $130 a head, meaning one six-up team was well worth over half the cost of a new Concord coach. Major stage lines would run over 3,000 head of horses. It was neat getting to help um, like harness and unharness horses and learning about that a little bit and them being willing to have us help, though sometimes I felt like I was in the way. <laughs> but that was really cool because I've never you know, experienced that before. <laughs>
since Stemple Pass was a back dirt road, we knew we wouldn't need the flasher truck for that. Um, and as the trip continued, we pretty much just used our judgment depending on the road and the traffic as to whether we would need it in different situations. Going down Stemple Pass was the first dirt road we were on, so it really took you back in time, made you think what it would have been like back in the 1800s. The first stage line came to the Montana Territory in 1864 to meet the needs of the Virginia City Gold Rush. Transporting gold was a risky business, so an armed guard was nothing short of a necessity. Another crucial role that stage lines played was delivering news and communication between the people of the East and the growing population of the West. In 1868, the first 160 acres of Montana Territory to be settled under the Homestead Act was claimed in the Helena area. The demand for speedy communication grew, and by the 1880s, a letter mailed in New York could be expected to roll into the Montana Territory a short 22 days later. Day three is when we really started to find a purpose. We began to plan out some different shots and try and get ahead of the stagecoach. We would like fly ahead, jump into the car, and <laughs> like go flying down the road trying to get like just even a few minutes ahead and sometimes we wouldn't get far enough ahead <laughs> so we'd be like just getting out of the car with our cameras and the stagecoach would be coming already yeah um so that was very sad but the one time that we went ahead and then they radioed us they're like hey make sure to be ready for um us when we come around the corner we're like okay let's... as they come around the corner all we see is like feet just like <laughs> On, laying on top of the stagecoach. <laughs> the horses had complete control. Yes. They really trusted the horses yes, with this they, one. They weren't even uh, driving it, just uh, yeah. trusting, trusting that the horses could stay on the road, which they did very good. It's hard to explain just exactly how good that day felt. After traveling all day in the rain the day before, things felt just about perfect. How do you like this day versus yesterday? It's nice. The sun was shining, the sky was blue, and the temperature was just about perfect, especially for the horses. It wasn't too hot making them sweat, and it wasn't too cold for us stagecoach drivers. Along with the good weather, we started coming into some new terrain. The treed mountainside started turning into rolling hills with some pastures and uh, some small branches along the foothills of the Helena Valley. Our first greeting coming into the Helena Valley was a herd of cows that came running alongside the fence for, I don't know, over a mile probably. I don't know if they thought we were a feed truck or grain, whatever we were, but they were pretty excited to see us. We were clipping along down the road and a couple flagged us down and wanted to just ask a few questions about where we were going and why we were taking the trip. We ended up offering them a ride in the stagecoach and took their car and just drove it down to the next stage stop. stopped and waved us up and we went up to see what was going on and they were like, hey, let's switch you and you can ride on the coach. And I was like, hey, that's cool. I haven't ridden on the coach yet. So Brooke and I hopped up there in the coach, um, just glad to sort of uh, break up our day a little bit and experience something different. Um, I'd always been around driving, but just never had the opportunity to really do it myself. People, like, people want it's not like That 
that was something that I enjoyed a lot on the trip. So, as a coach driver, uh -huh. what is the life lesson you learned from your experience? Uh, well, I think there could be a lot of life lessons that you learned, but something that comes to mind is just making sure you stay in line and you keep your horses in line because if paying attention because if you let your horses get too much head or you don't give them enough of their head and they get all over the road like that's really be assertive and make sure you keep your horses in a straight line. Mm -hmm. So I think even So as as a pastor, it, it's kind of the pastor role, you know, keeping your horses yeah, in line. Yeah, you have to be okay to have a firm hand. Yeah. Midday break was one of the easiest times to do planning because we were all together and we had to plan out a route through Helena because we didn't know exactly where we were going. So we just tried to find a road without too much traffic on it to get through there. <laughs> I, you get I guess you close. could go these roads do go down like you could get off here. I think Lake Helena would be cool. Uh, yeah, I think as long as we're in that sightseeing business. During the midday break on that third day, while the horses were eating and the people were resting, Brooke, Charity, and I found ourselves sitting in the sagebrush and looking out across the prairie and talking about the Lord. Um, it was really awesome to be on a quality adventure with some quality people. Um, and it also was a reminder to me that all this uh, beautiful country we were rolling through was the handiwork of an incredible creator. So after midday break, we hit the pavement again, full of energy. All right, Priam. So what is, uh, you have many roles on the trip, but one of them is the trailer hauler team swapper. What is a life lesson that you learned from that role? Huh. Well, I would say, Make sure all your equipment is hooked up right so nothing gets stored up. Okay, and how does that apply to life? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so take care of even the little things because 10 miles down the road, it can make a problem. Right. All right. If you had to say, like, this is the order that I would enjoy them in, enjoy the different jobs that you do. So there's like stagecoach driver, blinker truck, team swapper. So where would this, is this a least favorite or a more favorite? Oh, I'd say this is one of my favorites. And why is it one of your favorites? You get to keep moving. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Okay. <laughs> trailers but obviously only one set of horses gets unloaded. Yep. That probably would have been good because we just threw it all to both the gooseneck and it was kind of a mess pulling it out usually but it was fine because it made it made more people want to drive the coach so that was good <laughs> This, look, does this go up and inside?
most important part of baby on the trip? Yeah. Oh. Oh. the drive the stagecoach was one of the highlights of the trip. It was a little bit challenging at first um, and just kind of trying to get the hang of it and at one point I almost like knocked out the driver who was teaching me um, but I started to um, get the hang of it a little bit and at least enough to keep the horses on the road <laughs> and not crash into any cars. And it was just really neat being able to have the reins in my hands and um, just kind of connect with the horses and uh, just keep them in line, I guess. So, yeah, I'm very thankful for that experience. What'd you think, Brooke? Huh? What'd you think? It was fantastic. Good. Good. The Cleft Ranch is kind of a shot in the dark. Austin had called me once and I had saved his number just in case it worked out. And then we didn't really know all that third day was kind of back and forth whether we were going to make it or not. So it ended up working out with me. Got a hold of them and rolled in there that evening. when you're rolling into a new place um, with people that you've never met before. You've maybe talked to on the phone once or twice um, pretty briefly, um, but the owners of the Clefner Ranch, the Youngs, gave us a really warm welcome and uh, made us feel right at home right off the bat. You're a shotgun? Sure. Okay, go around <laughs> that side. Uh, All right. I, I, Please I've enjoy never, the ride. Oh, good. <laughs> you have it? for a treat. They've been going like that all day? Yeah, not, not, yeah. Okay. How many horses? Well, yeah.
Once we got the horses fed and put away for the evening, uh, the Youngs took us over to the Clefner barn and gave us a tour of it. And it was extremely impressive. Uh, it was built in the late 1800s and it was really neat to get to learn about uh, the history of the whole ranch there and the hands it had been through. Uh, just seeing the craftsmanship of how this thing was put together was amazing. The Youngs did an incredible job restoring it and all the other outbuildings around the whole Clefner ranch. Up to this point in the trip, we'd all been roughing it, sleeping out under the stars or in our vehicles. When the Youngs offered us the chance to stay in their guest cabin, us girls took full advantage of the opportunity. Okay, ready? 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 Hi, there. I think the part that I enjoyed was having a full kitchen um, with a refrigerator and a stove. Um, it made preparing meals a lot faster and easier for those two days that we were there. The third day was a really good day. We made it 61 miles, which wasn't quite as many miles as the day before, but we had to climb over Stimple Pass, which really took a lot of steam out of our horses. So when we got to Clefner Ranch, we were really thankful to have a good place to spend the night and rest up the next day. And Mr. Young even mentioned something about having some projects for us to do, so we're all looking forward to what that might be. Mm -hmm.